This is the Fox 5 Rev Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. Welcome inside the Rev Zone. I'm Kevin Bollinger. We'll hear from Tony Sanchez in just a little bit. We have a lot of ground to cover as the Cannon is back home in Las Vegas for another year after a wild win in Reno that was marred by a postgame brawl involving fans. We're going to get to it all, but we begin with the first half highlights as the Rebels stormed out of the gates in Reno. The rivalry renewed as UNLV and UNR met in the battle for the Fremont Cannon. Reno had the ball first, but the defense quickly forced a punt, and the Rebels started at their own 48. On third and two, Courtney Reese around the left side for 16 yards and a first at the 28. That led to a Daniel Gutierrez 40-yard field goal, and UNLV struck first, leading 3-0. The Wolfpack got the ball back and drove down the field. Devontae Lee runs for 14 yards on third down. That would move the ball into Rebel territory. Then Carson Strong hits Elijah Cooks for 19 to the 17. The defense, though, would hold, and Brandon Talton missed a 29-yard field goal wide right. UNLV took over on the 20. On the first play from scrimmage, Charles Williams burst through the line, and he has all kinds of daylight. No one was going to catch ground Chuck as he storms 80 yards for the touchdown, setting off a wild celebration as UNLV took a 10-0 lead. The defense forced another three and out, and the Rebel offense went right back to work. Kenyon Oblad to Makai Stevenson, and it goes for 32 yards and another Rebel touchdown. At the end of the first quarter, UNLV had a 17-0 lead. Reno would come back. Off the direct snap, Kelton Moore goes for 16 yards to put the ball inside the five. On the next play, Devontae Lee bangs it in for the score. The Rebel lead was cut to 17-7. UNLV went three and out, and UNR struck again. Strong goes downfield to Cooks. This one goes for 43 yards to put the ball in the red zone. That led to a 27-yard field goal, and it was 17-10 UNLV. The Wolfpack got the ball right back on third and 13 at the Rebel 31. Strong over the middle to Dominic Christian for a first at the 14. The defense, though, would hold again. It would be another field goal, and it was 17-13 UNLV with 3-10 left in the half. The Rebels with the quick strike to answer. First play of the ensuing drive, Oblad to Steve Jenkins. He gets the catch and he breaks free. 75 yards for the touchdown. Once again, the momentum had swung, and UNLV went into the locker room at halftime with a 24-13 lead defense uh, was outstanding in that first half. Yeah, uh, you know what, they did a really good job. And funny, when we came in, we looked at the stat line, they were out there for 42 plays at 22. So we talked about, you know, we needed to sustain some drives in the second half of their going to wear out. But they did a really, really good job. I mean, and they, I was really excited about the way they executed the game plan and set a, you know, pretty potent offense down early. That 80 yard run by Charles Williams, uh, you know, kind of set the tone there in terms of getting the offense really on the It really did. You know, but we've talked about it over the last bunch of weeks. You know, we need something, we need some of those simple things to turn into big time things. You know, and Chuck gives you that opportunity. So that was great. That was a big time run, and uh, you know, again, give us a lead. To the second half now, where it was a nail biter, and then the celebration of the cannon staying red. UNLV had the ball to start the second half and started moving the chains. Third and three at the 44. The handoff to Courtney Reese for the first at midfield. Then Oblad to Makai Stevenson, who fights for seven more. It was fourth and three at the Reno 31. Oblad rolls right and then tucks it and runs, but is stuffed. The Rebs turn it over on downs. They did, though, burn nearly six minutes off the clock. Reno worked it into UNLV territory, but the defense held. This pass from Strong to Cooks falls incomplete. The two teams exchanged punts, and we went into the fourth quarter with UNLV still leading 24-13. The Rebels struck early in the fourth. Oblad hits Jenkins in stride, and it goes for 33 yards down to the Reno 35. The drive would stall, and Gutierrez comes out, and he connects on a career-long 50-yard field goal. The UNLV lead was built to two touchdowns at 27-13, with just over nine minutes left. 
the Wolfpack would not go away. Strong to Christian for a 24 yard score. The drive taking only two minutes, 15 seconds and the lead was only seven at 27 20. UNLV went three and out and gave the ball right back to Reno who started at their own 25 with 517 to go. On third and six at the Rebel 49. Strong to Ben Putman for 35 yards to the 14. Then strong to Brendan O'Leary Orange down to the two. Lee would cap it off with a direct snap in the run. We were tied at 27 and headed to overtime. UNLV won the toss and elected to start on defense. And the D came up huge, shutting Reno down and forcing a 42 yard field goal. The Rebels got the ball and a touchdown would win it. And that's exactly what they got. On third down, Oblak to Jenkins and let the celebration begin as UNLV storms the field. Unfortunately though, things would turn ugly as a cheap shot by a Reno player on Oblak during the celebration triggered a brawl that had the Wolfpack fans joining in. We'll have more on that in a few minutes, but let's focus on the joy from UNLV as they win 33 to 30, keep the cannon red and had a party in the locker room. Now it's time to pass the torch to someone else. Yes, sir. But you guys still carry it. You understand that? That's right. You guys put a hell of a game. Two games in a row under adverse situation and play some of your best football down the stretch. a great team effort you know and it's not just today or last week it's really the last five weeks when you look at San Diego State and the ball bouncing off the damn goalpost and the Hawaii game which we had every opportunity to win that damn ball game beating you know San Jose winning this one our guys played their best football at the end that's what a football team should do so again um, just really proud of the way you know our guys played and our seniors finished we don't have anything after this game so you got to get empty your take right now you got to fit all your chips in and just continue to play man this is a rivalry game tempers are high and the one thing that everybody is saying is just about bragging rights. It's about pride. It's about a lot of things. The city of Las Vegas versus the city of Reno. And it's just, you know, I just, I'm so happy for our defense to continue out there and fight. And a shout out to the offense, to, you know, for finishing the win. We went out there, we practiced hard, did everything we were supposed to do, and we came out there with the same energy we had from the San Jose win, and we just finished this thing off. This is for the coaching staff. You know, we love them. We love everything they've done for us, the opportunity they gave us, all, every single one of them. Um, the city of Las Vegas, you know, they stand behind us. And, you know, this is just a big win for them, all of us, and we, you know, we're going to cherish it. Well, we touched on it briefly, but let's dive a little deeper to what happened on the field after the game. As UNLV celebrated, there was a lot of things going on all at once. First, Steve Jenkins and several Rebel players went straight to the Reno sidelines to celebrate in front of them, which set some people off. Then you have the cheap shot by UNR's Austin Arnold, who blindsides and appears to sucker punch Kenyon Oblad. That had the Rebel offensive lineman coming to Oblad's defense, and that set off the bigger melee. Arnold, we should note, is a Bishop Gorman guy from Las Vegas. But the fight spilled towards the fans, who ripped helmets off players and threw snowballs, ice clumps, beer cans, and soda bottles at UNLV players on the field. All the while, security not really around to do anything about it until it was way too late. In the end, coaches and personnel from both schools got the players off the field, and afterwards, UNLV talked about the post-game incident. We scored the last touchdown, and we're all going crazy. I ran to the end zone to celebrate. I got hit, blindsided. Um, you know, I was just screaming, and then I just got hit, uh, and then you know, the whole thing started. It's a gnarly rivalry, and anytime you're going into that end of the end zone, there's a chance that something bad will happen. So it's really unfortunate. Um, I hope it doesn't take away from what our guys did. I'm really proud of what our guys did. It was a really dangerous situation there at the end of getting Noah B and they had a bunch of dudes on him. So there's no place in football for that. And, you know, it won't be my job to go talk to him. I talked to him a little bit, but whoever the next guy is, he can talk to him about it. And, you know, and I'm sure uh, Coach, you know, over there will do the same thing. Both athletic directors put out a joint statement Saturday night that read, the events that occurred following today's football game have no place in college athletics and we are deeply disappointed by this incident, which detracts from what was a hard fought and emotional football game between our state's only two NCAA programs. We are examining all available video from the incident and working with the Mountain West office in a full review. Additionally, we are working with the University of Nevada Reno Police Department to review the actions on the field and in the stands after the game. 
Rivalry games are at the heart of what should be great about intercollegiate athletics. We will continue to prioritize sportsmanship at all of our events, especially those between our two great institutions. Now, as of the time of taping of this show, the Mountain West has not made a statement or announced penalties, but you can be sure that there are going to be some suspensions involved. We'll keep you posted. Well, let's hope that the postgame extracurriculars don't take away from a huge program win for UNLV as they win the cannon for the second year in a row. Up next, I go one-on-one -on -one with Tony Sanchez one final time in the red zone. Our interview is straight ahead. You're watching the Fox 5 Rep Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. After the game in Reno, I had the chance to talk with Tony Sanchez about his time at UNLV and where he thinks the program stands right now, as well as his third Cannon win in five years. And what a way to go out. Yeah, I tell you what, it's special. This is a great group of young men, great group of coaches, and just proud of everybody in the organization. We, you know, we, we, we took over a tough mission, and everybody contributed to making this place a lot better, and it is now. When it got to that, that final overtime, you saw the touchdown that was going to happen, the thoughts that just went through your head. You know, it just kind of made you, you giggle. I mean, I just I brought the ball, I talked the defense separately, then the offense, and just like, hey, guys, you know, we, we, we got a couple snaps left of football. Let's go out on our, on our own feet. You know what I'm saying? Just keep playing hard. And one of the guys yelled out, this is our season. I said, no, it's not. The next play is what we need to focus on, not the whole season, right? And, uh, and they did. I mean, it's just tell you what, it was a back and forth game, and that's what you sign up for. You want to be in those kind of type of competitive environments, and it was today. Have you had time to reflect over the last uh, week or so just about your time at UNLV and, and what do you take away from those five years? Yeah, you know, I mean, it all happened pretty fast again last Friday to, you know, to, to talking to everybody on Monday and, uh, you know, just, you know, so there'll be more thinking going on. I mean, you know, these next couple of weeks, I'll have some time to sit down and take some notes, write some things down and reflect on it. But I'll say this, it's been an unbelievable five years. I've met great people like yourself and, you know, the, the media has been good. There's been some good back and forth at times, but they've, all, they've been really professional and great about it. You know, um, I really appreciate, you know, Len Jess, so Tina Coons from Murphy, you know, early on, Don Schneider, people that knew where the program was and were, and were, were so diligent about just making it better every single day, you know, bit by bit. Um, academic advisors, David Welling and his crew, what they did to support us and support these kids. Um, you know, obviously the players and their parents, I mean, uh, they're, they're, they're the most important thing that there is. All well, the coaches that have come through here, some of them were on the other sideline tonight, you know, but everybody's made the place better. And then our unbelievable community. I mean, that Fortuna Football Complex has set UNLV football to take, I mean, this place should just skyrocket now. And, uh, and, and without the, the, the wonderful members in the community, obviously the Fertitta family, you know, Gon family, you know, there's a Sands Corp, you know, guys like George Maloof, there's, a, you know, Hope Ann said, I mean, I'm forgetting people, I'm sure I'll make some people mad, but there's so many people that I don't care if it was a $2,000 locker or for an $11 million gift. They believed in what we were doing and they contributed to it and it wasn't there yet. And, and, and I'll always be thankful to the city of Las Vegas. But 11 football seasons, done some special things. And uh, again, it's been an absolute privilege. That complex is part of your legacy as well, though. Yeah, I mean, we built it so that we could help turn this place around and win. So unfortunately, we don't get a chance to, to use it. But it's there. Um, it's special. It, it's um, again, it's, there's nothing like it in the Mountain West. And and I really think it, that along with the Legion Stadium, along with the culture we've built here, you know, the guys have, you know, they're, they're winning more. You know, again, it's not where we want it to be, but it's more than they have in 15 years. And if they just keep, you know, you know, just keep, you know, biting away at it every single day, it'll get where it needs to be. As you leave UNLV football, what is the state of the program right now? Well, right now, I mean, you have the three highest GPAs in the history of the school, the highest APRs in the history of the school. Um, you know, we won 20 games, and, you know, the, and again, the, the previous five was, I believe, 15. The previous five before that was 16. So we won more games. We won the can of three or five times. We'd won it one time in 10 years. Um, and we're, we had all time, not football fundraising records, we smashed athletic fundraising records, and uh, I'm really proud of that. So it, I think it's in a great state. You know, it really is. Now, again, you know, moving forward, they got to stay healthy. You know what I'm saying? You got to solidify that quarterback spot. Kenyon did a really good job. We got a bunch of guys that are out right now that will be returning next year, you know, guys like Drew Tickman, Phillip Hill, you know, I mean, there's some guys there that, you know, Courtney Reese, you saw today, you know, we, we, we held on to his red shirt, you know, um, we were able to not play Jaron Caldwell today, and yet last week we, you know, we held on to his, so there's some uh, really good ball players coming back, and I think it's in a, a good state. 
what's next for Tony Sanchez? I mean, we're going to find out, man. I'm going to put my resume out there and see who calls back. I, no, I'm, I think good things will happen. You know, I've got some great agents that I work with, with Athletes First and, you know, um, Kyle McCarthy, you know, talk to him all the time. And, you know, there, there's some really good things out there. But I'm excited to go work for someone, you know, to take all the things that I've learned over my career, especially here in these last five years, and just, you know, you know, get a position group, you know, have a group of 14, 15 guys, and, you know, and, and make them better every single day and, you know, help someone else uh, go on a championship. A final message at all for the Las Vegas and the mm -hmm. Rebel community? You know what, Rebel community, I appreciate you. Again, I've loved my time here. Everyone's been so supportive. And to the city of Las Vegas, it's just simple. Viva Las Vegas. Coach, it's been a pleasure. We appreciate uh, all your efforts and time over the last five years. You've been great to us. Thank you. The search for a new coach is underway. We'll keep you updated as we get any information. We're stepping away from football, though, for a moment. We're going to talk some hoops. Up next, a recap of the week for the running Rebels. Two games, one at home and one on the road. Highlights and postgame reaction on the backside of the break. You're watching the Fox 5 Rep Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. The Running Rebels had two games this week, one at home on Tuesday, but we begin with Saturday's game at Cincinnati. Saturday, the Rebels ran in Cincinnati, where UNLV is winless all time against the Bearcats. Elijah Mitro Long living up to his name, tickling the twine from distance. He had 14 in the first half as UNLV led by nine at the break. But in the second half, the Bearcats claw back, putting together a 12-0 run with authority. Keith Williams pitching in nine of those 12, none louder than this one-hander here, since he up by one. But Mbake Jong says that I can match you as he finished with nine points in the game. Here comes, though, another big Bearcats run. Jaron Cumberland taking a trip to three land. Cincinnati led by 10 with under a minute to go. The running Rebels looked like they were about to get run out of the arena. But thanks to the likes of Hardy, who chipped in with 13, and Mitro Long, who had a game-high 29 points, he also scored nine of the final 12 points for UNLV, including this three ball to tie the game with just 1.3 seconds to go. We headed to overtime, tied at 16. But in the extra frame, the UNLV offense dried up and the Bearcats buckled down, blocking any type of comeback. And the running Rebels dropped their sixth game of the season, third in overtime, the final 72 to 65. The running Rebels at home for the final time for the next three weeks. Jackson stayed in town and the pace was a little quicker in this one. Donnie Tillman penetrates and dishes to Mbake Jong for the lay-in. Then Nick Blair in the lane, he gets the hoop and the harm. Rebs in transition, Marvin Coleman finishes and the foul. This game was tied until UNLV went on an 11-0 run late in the first half, capped by this corner three from Amari Hardy. It closed out with Bryce Hamilton with the baseline cut. He gets the rock and throws it down. The running Rebels led 36-27 at the break. Tillman hit a couple of threes early in the second half to get UNLV going, but Jackson State wouldn't go away. Miles Daniels knocked down a triple. That cut it to three with 10 minutes left. They would get no closer as UNLV went on a 20 to two run. Jong even hit a three, dropping it in from the corner. And then with one second left on the shot clock, the inbounds pass to Hamilton, who banks home the heave. Everything going right down the stretch as UNLV wins it 80 to 57. Pride ourselves on defense, and we definitely felt like once we continue to get uh, stops and continue to play hard on defense, the offense comes naturally. And, you know, we make a big deal for ourselves as a team to make sure that defense is our biggest priority and it's the flow of the game ends up making it so that offense ends up clicking too. We just can't take things for granted. We have to be, we can't be a cool team. We have to be a team that's competitive every possession and values the details. Uh, we see that come and go. And I think our guys just made the decision that, you know what, we want to play harder. We want to find a way to win this game. And, you know, that's, I think that's what happened. The running Rebels are currently on the rodeo roadie. They open conference play at Fresno State on Wednesday before playing BYU in Salt Lake City on Saturday. We're back to wrap things up with the Cannon Game Plays of the Week. Straight ahead. You're watching the Fox 5 Rep Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm. Some final thoughts on Tony Sanchez. The man loves Las Vegas, and it just wasn't your typical line when he said that he wanted to stay here forever. He really did. 
He'll be the first to admit that the wins and losses weren't there. But I think years from now, fans may remember him for what he did to set a foundation for the future. If things turn around, Sanchez should get some credit. He single-handedly raised the money for the Fertitta Center, took a program that was dangerously close to becoming an APR casualty, and got the team GPA turned around to a record number, all while changing the culture. Yes, there were no bowl games and definitely more losses than wins, but no one can deny that he leaves this program much better than he inherited it. Sometimes it takes time before legacies can be defined. Sanchez deserves reserved judgment on how he's judged for his time at UNLV, and we wish him the best moving forward. That's a wrap for this week. TJ Otzelberger begins his run in the red zone next week. We leave you with the best plays from the Cannon win in Reno. Good night. The Rib Zone Sports Show, sponsored by R.C. Willie and Levitt Law Firm.